everyone welcome back to the opulent life this is ozzy here again and as you can see in front of you we have a tag hoyer box so it's not a uh, true unboxing in the sense that i don't have the cardboard box with me but it's an unboxing nevertheless and i just purchased this tag hoyer watch from macy's and i'll show you which one in a second uh but just so you guys know this was not bought online from Joma shop which like my usual watches are this time I went to an authorized dealer and you know wanted to see uh, what the experience was in buying it with warranty so that's why I chose Macy's and I'll show, uh, tell you guys the details of the purchase and how much I got it for but let's go ahead with this unboxing first so you can see this is the tag wear box it's a uh, no nonsense black cardboard box you know nothing uh, special it's got the tag where logo on it swiss avant-garde since 1860 tag where now you guys have some background tag where was never a tag where since 1860 it was originally just hoyer watches since 1860 and then in the 70s or 60s they got tag bought hoyer and then they merged together from tag where tag stands for technique avant-garde and so the company kind of went through a reformation under them some people criticize it, some people don't, some people think it was a good change, most people claim it was a bad change for them. But now, they've recently they've reinvented themselves over the past decade and made a whole lot of changes. And they are acquired by the LVMH group, which also owns Hublot. So the quality has been kind of on par with Hublot. The marketing has been very, very strong. They have some really good marketing guys. and. Some of the other brands, you know, who are offering good quality should learn from them actually in terms of that, even if they don't agree with the watches by themselves. So again, coming back to point, uh, this one is one of the modern tag wearers. It's not a reissue. This is not a vintage watch. This is not something they used to make before. This is one of their modern watches. And I'll show that to you in a second. Let's take this box off. All right, here we go. Put this to the side over here. And then inside you have a typical box that opens up there's another box inside this time the logo is not colored it's kind of embossed in there let's see let's take it out first okay so this is the box and has a little bit of uh, leather not sure if it's real leather but it's there tag wear is embossed same thing as you see over here it's written exactly here but instead of colored it's embossed all right you know, got the warranty card on the underside okay let's see now on the inside we have the user manual and booklet instructions and guarantee card so keep the guarantee card in the back here i haven't activated it or put it in yet so this is where the guarantee card goes and then you have all these instructions different languages how to set the time date and everything so a nice little booklet nothing too big nothing too over the top just your standard booklet which is typically how it should be and then you have this card here that says congratulations on the purchase how to pr protect your tag hoyer register for the warranty yada 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 so you have all that in here let's put it back i think Nothing else interesting in the box. There's no secret compartments or anything. As you can see, this has the serial numbers on the back side, and that's pretty much it. You can see the back side. This side does not have any serial number. It's actually this outer box that has it. So, it's dark. It's not a black box. So I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but this is dark brown, sort of a coffee colored box. The outside box, on the other hand, is definitely black, as you can see. And this outer covering is also, I would say black too, but actually it's not black. This is also a dark brown. So literally like three different color combinations. That's kind of odd. Dark brown here, a little bit lighter brown here, and then you have black here. Not really understanding the scheme, but that's how it is, guys. All right, so let's put the packaging to the side for a minute and focus on the watch itself. Not wearing anyone right now, because. I'm gonna show you guys a comparison video later. Okay, so let's open this up. Okay, we have your receipts and stuff and the guarantee card. This is kind of how the guarantee card looks like, okay? 
that's just the receipt so i'll put that to the side all right so here is the watch guys and first before i take it out i want to show you the inside the cream beige colored box uh it's your standard leather stitching in there nothing super fancy although at this price point i would have expected a little bit more pizzazz however looks like we're not getting that okay so it comes on this cushy little pillow we got all the tags on it and here it is guys this is the tag hoyer aqua racer caliber 5 automatic and this one is the 43 millimeter with the black chrome uh ceramic bezel and yeah so this is the watch guys i'll show we'll talk about this in a little bit more detail let's just take this clasp off and put the box to the side here actually let's just keep it there okay so let's give you another look here it is you can focus so yeah so that's the tag hoyer aqua racer this is their dive watch from their lineage they have the formula one they have the carrera series which is very well known then they have the monaco the carrera and monaco are more motorsport inspired formula one is obviously more motorsport inspired and the formula one is really the entry level watches that they offer this is kind of in between it's comfortably between the formula one and the Carrera and then the Octavias are kind of like Octavias or should I say are kind of like on the higher end and then the Monocles are like the really high end then you have the Tourbillon then you have the skeletonized versions of the Carreras and whatnot so that's for a different video maybe I'll review them some other time but this is what we have right now so let's talk about this watch for a little bit and I'll go through every single feature it has let's start with the dial so as you can see black dial has some printing on it straight line prints so that's good there's a little bit of detailing on there i'd like that and then we have this ceramic bezel which is rotating unidirectional obviously i'll show it to you has a nice solid clicking movement and even with these gloves on i'm able to do it easily so that's a good sign it means it's offering good grip and yeah i mean it's usually very hard with these white gloves that I have and nice solid clicks. No, maybe a tiny, I, I don't think so. Actually, no play in the bezel. That's perfect. That's very good. The sign of high quality. And guys, I gotta admit, I am a sucker for ceramic bezels like this. I just love it when the light shines on them and they reflect back. Although this one, not as shiny as the Cerachrome on a Rolex maybe, or maybe the Seamaster, but it does the job. It's nice. It's decent quality has the 10 20 30 40 50 markers on there has these uh, markers till the 15 minute indicating that the oxygen tank in most oxygen cylinders is 15 to 20 minutes it could have gone up to 20 but i think they went for safety and just said you know let's stop at 15 and you can see that the 12 o'clock marker on the bezel has a pip on there that's a loom pip so you can you know adjust it we're going to do a loom test later on very soon I know you guys are waiting to see that and then let's look at the dial again you have the date at the three o'clock position right now and it's got a magnifying glass on the on the crystal over here which is a sapphire crystal scratch uh, not scratch proof actually scratch resistant it's flat it's not domed and then you have all these markers with the luminescent markings all the way from 12 to 11 the only one that's you know kind of chopped out is the three o'clock one because of the date window and then it has the tag hoyer logo let's actually look at the crown too in a second but yeah it has the tag hoyer logo in the center and then aqua race on the top some text here saying caliber 5 automatic 300 meters water resistant also 1000 feet now caliber 5 guys is, i gotta tell you this is not an in-house tag hoyer movement this is basically an eta 2824 automatic and that's kind of been maybe slightly retuned and put into this watch over here. So not an in-house movement, but the design is by themselves, obviously. Taking strong cues from the Rolex Submariner, watches like the Seamaster, launching Hydro Conquest. But yeah, has a little bit of everything over here. Watch is fully stainless steel case and 43 millimeters. And you can see that the hour and the minute hands have a full strip of loom on them with just one piece of metal I think I'd like to say that's rhodium rhodium kind of like cutting in between 
the tips and the stems on both hour and minute hands. And then you have the seconds hand with a yellow contrast marking and it is going through all of those markers very, very smoothly, you can see. It's beating very fast, 28,800 VPH. The yellow contrast over here is also written on the text on the caliber five and 300 meters. So I like the yellow and black combination, very good visibility, very good contrast. And I like how the pointer is actually going through every single minute marker. And that helps with the visibility, guys. You have the Swiss made logo at the bottom, six o'clock position. And these, I gotta say, these mark, these applied markers are really good. I like applied markers on watches. They're, they're signify good quality. And you can see this bezel, it has a lot of detail on it. It's got polished finish on the top, brush finish at the bottom, all across this ring, you can see. Very nice, very nicely done, I gotta say. Now the crown itself, very chunky looking crown, by the way. Let's see. So I'm opening this up and it's very smooth, very easy to operate, screw down crown. And it, as it should be for a dive watch like this, easy to come off. At the time, yeah, no problem whatsoever. And then one position, let's see, let's do a quick set of the date. There you go, quick set of the date, quick set function. I'm gonna show you guys how the winding sounds. Typical 28 24 sounds, a little bit smoother, maybe they modified it a little bit. And it's very easy to screw it back down, and I like that actually. And that's something we're gonna come back to when I compare this with the Longines Hydro Conquest. So, case is 43 millimeters in diameter. Lug to lug is approximately 50 millimeters. As we can see over here, yeah, approximately 50 millimeters, okay. And then we have thickness around 12 millimeters, not bad for a dive watch, it is, it has a bit of heft, I'm gonna say. It's it's a, it's not a super thin watch, but I guess for dive watches, this kind of works. Also guys, a little bit, a little bit of detail. You can see the chaptering has a lot of markers here. They're all for every single minute, except for the Swiss made over here cutting in between. That's also something to keep in mind. And uh, what else? Let, let's come to the case bag now. Also, before we go to the case bag, you can see it's a mirrored polish finish, high polish finish on the sides for the stainless steel. And then on the back, you guys can see, solid case bag, so no see-through case bag. A little bit disappointing, but I guess with dive watches, you can kind of expect uh, this on most of them, except for maybe the Seamasters. You have a picture of a scuba diver. And it says automatic. 300 meters, 1,000 feet, Swiss made since 1860. Same thing that it says on the top boxes. So yeah, nice overall finish. It's got a little bit of, well, actually it's got all of it is brushed. So there's no difference in finishes over here. All right, let's talk about the bracelet. The bracelet feels very high quality, I have to say. Very nice, very chunky, very solid finish. Brush finish all across, guys. Overall, all of these links are brushed, and I like how they kind of have these grooves into them, making it stand out from most standard watch clasps. You can see over here, yeah. A little bit of grooving. Yeah, that sets us apart from the other watches that I've reviewed so far. Still have the tag getting in between. Tag is getting in the way of the tag, guys. All right, yeah, very nice, good quality finish. Also to note on the sides, it's polished, which is kind of unusual. Usually manufacturers, they tend to keep the sides brushed and top. Center some links are sometimes polished, but this, in this case, they have the sides polished all across, giving a uniform finish. That's good, good to know that. Clasp now. All right, so this is what the class looks like. I haven't taken all the stickers yet. So yeah, got tag wear written here. A little bit standard, run of the mill class, nothing fancy. Just lock it in like that. Push button release, 
and then it opens like that so no friction based class like the longine hydro conquest that's good but it's very standard very plain i would have liked a little bit more design over here guys i gotta be honest with you I'm not gonna kid around i like the taper over here it would have been nice to have this polished finish but brushed is okay but my real complaint is like you know this part here so standard nothing non-imaginative at all and i would have liked some creativity here you have the standard divers extension not very big but i guess it works but no like you know fancy extension like you have in the omega seamaster where you can just slide it back and forth you do have the micro extensions here but yeah so that's that it's nice that nice that it comes packaged with all these blue stickers okay now guys the power reserve on this watch is only 38 hours that's very disappointing guys i gotta say you know it does not even come close to the competition as i'm gonna do in my comparison that is not acceptable for the for watch of this price point with this caliber no i i can't forgive them for that okay one thing we missed we have the tag wear logo on the crown over here but you know i would have liked that if the crown is fully locked in this logo should be straight and not you know in a position where it's kind of offset that's shows you that you know the finishing I mean, there were some, you know, they kind of cut corners in the finishing is what I would say, because this is not how the Omega logo stands. This is not even how the Longine logo stands when it's fully locked in. It's supposed to be straight. Even the Tissot that I reviewed, guys, you could, you know, make it straight if you wanted to, because obviously that's not a screw down crown, but on watches like this, I would really like it to be straight down. Okay, let's do right, one more point about the bracelet, guys. They're secured by solid end links. There's no screwed screws over here, like the Seamaster. So you kind of have to like, you know, pop them out, put them in for resizing. I haven't resized this yet, but to be honest, I'm not even sure I'm gonna keep this one, but let's see how it feels for the next few days, yeah. All right, guys, the moment you all have been waiting for, let's do a quick loom test to see how good these markers are. I'm gonna shine some light from my and let's darken the lights. Okay, not bad. That's decent loom. You have aqua green loom on the hands and the markers, but you have green loom on the three, six, nine, and twelve o'clock positions and the loom pit, including the seconds hand. And also, I should say the minute and the tip of the minute hand and the tip of the hour hand actually. So that's good. Green and blue contrast works well. And in this light, I can, you know, and it's lasting pretty well too. So no problems on the loom, guys. Although the pip could be a little bit brighter. Let's see. Okay, there you go. So it was about charging it properly. And it seems like the loom is good, guys. It's pretty decent. No problems on that part. All right, coming back to the watch, guys. Overall, I like the design and finish of the watch. So I got this from Macy's for... So, guys, I got this from Macy's for $24.92 with tax. The retail on this thing is $27.50. So they gave me a 10% off, but with the tax, it kind of, like, you know, boiled down to... Price. So $24.92 and 36 cents to be totally exact. Now guys, uh, you can find this on Joma shop for around $2,075 right now to be honest. So if I were you, I'd probably check that place out. Uh, there is a 41 millimeter of this watch as well. It costs a little bit less. I can't find it on Joma shop, but if you hunt around, maybe on Amazon, you'll be able to find it. This does not only come with the black, it comes with the blue, also comes with green also comes in a gmt with two-tone red and black also comes in two-tone gold and steel so there's a variety of options of the aqua racer guys and even if you if you guys are not in for automatics there's a quartz version that's substantially less in price almost a thousand dollars less so if you're into the battery powered ones go for it although i wouldn't recommend it 
I'm even I'm actually underwhelmed with the movement in this one too so it's not a big deal I mean they have the 28 2824 which is a standard workhorse Swiss movement but it's covered even though we can't take off the case back here I can tell you there is a plastic spacer inside with the movement so that kind of throws me off once I learned about it so I'm not the biggest fan of the movement quality these guys have but if you're in for the look and you're looking for an entry-level diver watch this isn't a bad option although I would recommend you know saving up for the Seamaster or going a little bit lower and maybe getting the Longines Hydro Conquest with the ceramic bezel if you guys want and even the Auris Aquas is a good competition for this type of watch and they're making some good moves in the segment so Tagore has a lot to live up to guys there uh, I mean there's they ha the good thing about them is that they're offering this in several different variations to suit your taste there's even a chronograph version as well guys that's a little bit more obviously it costs a lot more but I mean it's up to you guys if you like that you can go for it so you guys know the reference number on this watch is WAY201A.BA0927 oh, wow that was a mouthful and guys here's a wrist shot of the watch I haven't sized the bracelet but I wanted to show you guys how it looks I have a six and a half inch wrist this is kind of filling up all the real estate on it so it's kind of like at the very very outer limits of my wrist I think it's a little big although I asked a few people and they said you know it looks fine that might be if you like larger watches this should be okay for you I mean I probably could pull it off in today's world because face let's face it guys nobody really cares even if it's oversized it's part of style so if that's your style go for it I have a six and a half inch wrist and I am a little bit conservative when it comes to like big dials so I would probably if I were to go for this one I would have gotten the 41 millimeter but you know I decide you know let's venture out let's try something out of my comfort zone let's go for a larger size 43 millimeter and that's kind of why I'm not so sure about this one it's a little big on my wrist although it does feel good quality I like the feel of the stainless steel on this one very nice brushing Feels like it would be scratch resistant too and yeah I mean it, it's it seems like it would be a good comfortable daily wear too as well you know maybe use it as a beater watch although it's pretty expensive for that purpose I would say as from the inside it has these two pushers here that kind of lock into place so it's not terrible but you know pretty generic I would say the movement contains about 26 jewels the bandwidth is about 20 millimeters over here guys. This is it for my review of the Tag Heuer Aqua Racer 43 millimeters with the black ceramic bezel. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please do like, share and subscribe to the channel for more content coming your way. Let me know what you guys would like me to review next. Until then, take care and have a great day. Bye.